we need to build tools and representations that let us see deeper and further and broader into these spaces. And oftentimes that'll mean that we have to kind of force the user to contend with complexity. But uh, if we solve those tough problems, then when we finally get there, we'll have new ways of seeing the world and new places for human agency to intervene. And that, I think, is the uh, power in representation. So the time of the community around it has grown significant enough. They were all walking around with a lot of assumptions about the meaning and the mission of this phrase and what kind of work it requires. But I think thinking about it in different ways, we might, in interpreting the term differently, could lead us to very different paths about what we choose to work on and what we choose to build. So one of the first critical questions we should ask is what does Tools for Thought have to do with computers? The phrase itself implies nothing about computation or digital objects. It's simply tools that help humans think new kinds of thoughts. Think about what's the first creative tool that sparked your imagination and just drop it in the chat. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, all these different tools. There were things I was curious about and I, I wanted to know more about. So what are things you're wondering about? What are you curious about? And then, they, like, what can you make to explore it? And it, it, it could be as simple as a drawing or, like, new, new software tools. Pretty much always we see our code bases as this uh, list of folders and files. It's, we lose so many pieces of information here because everything kind of looks the same. It's a lot harder here than if you did something like this circle packing diagram. Here you have each file has a different color based on its type and you can kind of see within folders uh, multiple levels. So 